you know, one other area I think around that's that's top of mind um, or involves a lot of our audience, potentially our business owners, you know, whether you're, you're a founder, whether you're a partner, whether you're someone that has a, an equity stake or potentially has to think about plan for the future, you know, while you, you can't necessarily get your hands dirty with the structure of a business, from an estate planning standpoint, you know, what are things that you often help your business owner clients with when it comes to, you know, succession planning, beneficiaries, maybe some of the tax considerations, especially if these estates are pretty large, anything there that should be kept in mind for an owner who has a, a legacy or a family to consider? Right. Um, well, if, you know, if we're looking at a taxable estate, again, over the estate tax limit, if someone is planning to transition or sell their business, they'd want to start really early talking to their tax person. I'm not a tax attorney, nor am I a CPA, but, but we work in conjunction with a lot of those folks and you need to talk to them about what's my tax hit gonna be? And is there a way to deal with that upon the sale? You can't have a sale inked and then do a lot of the things that need to be done. It's too late. You have to start really early with any succession planning really. But if you know there in the next X number of years, you wanna sell your business, it's time to start looking at it sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Because again, it can be too late. I had some people last week, they said, well, we already signed a deal with a buyer. And I said, well, you can't do any of this fancy trust planning around selling your estate uh, to put off cap gains and all that. It's too late. Mm -hmm. So I would say really first uh, involving a good tax person, planning early. And then on a more simple level, there is if you're a, if you're a business owner, and you, let's say you're the only owner of the business and you die, okay, or you become incapacitated. There, having a base estate plan of a revocable living trust can make things so much easier than if you have a business and you die with a will. Because if you die with a will, no one can sign anything on behalf of that business until they go to court and get appointed by a judge and do a probate. Probate isn't the end of the world, but it is a delay. It takes time, okay? So if I'm a business owner and there's no one who could sign on behalf of my business and I die, I have done nobody a favor by not having a revocable trust that right. avoids the probate. It just gives somebody power a lot faster. Right. So, you know, even at that base level, when I'm looking at a business owner, I'm generally saying there might be a better reason to have a trust for you. Right. And I think also it helps, I think if I'm correct, uh, it can be less contested, right, with the trust than the will. Sometimes, if there's multiple beneficiaries, children of the of maybe a parent or mm -hmm. other factors to consider. So, um, no, I think the trust, like you said, does give more control or more clarity, probably.